Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Bearable Bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As guys, I have put together an incredible video for today with various clips that are going to shock all of you. They have been adding more value to some speculation that has been running in this community for a couple years now. Speculation isn't liked by a lot of people, but it has been right a lot of the time in this community. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily go our way, but that's okay. We regroup, recalibrate, and continue moving forward. Some of these clips and the information I'm going to present supporting it will be profound, and it will shock a lot of you. Our beautiful, precious baby XRP is above 72 cents right now. A lot of people are feeling a lot better about the state of their investment today, and that's great. Bitcoin hovering around $39,000, XRP at $0.72, cents, and the rest of the crypto market has stabilized after pushing up. A lot of people have a lot of interest again, and that's incredible. Now before I get into this content for today, I want to say a brief thank you to everyone who subscribed to my mentorship program yesterday. We had four beautiful Zoom meetings with everyone who signed up for the group consulting. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very thankful for all of them. It was an incredible, incredible gathering. We learned so much about each other. And they're only just beginning. I'd also like to thank everyone who signed up for the VIP. About eight people so far have booked their one-on-one -on -one VIP sessions. That is extremely humbling too. Thank you so much. And guys, there are plenty of sessions still available for today. Please get your spots as the next available sessions will be available on Monday and Tuesday. Thanks to all of you. And now let's get into this powerful clip I posted on Twitter yesterday. We have this from AJ Hall, a Julia Chatterley IMF head Kristalina Georgieva interview. This is important because they're talking about digital currencies a potential U.S. digital reserve currency. And Julia Chatterley says digital X. That's an important indication that might be a wink-wink in the background between everyone involved. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to this language that I'm about to present to you. IMF's former head, Christine Lagarde, we believe laid the DLT infrastructure with Ripple, to potentially build an ESDR. Now this is speculation, but we have evidence to point us in that direction. And today, this is the closest indication I've seen of that being a real, real, real possibility. The Bretton Woods alignment meeting that happened just the other day, as well as their Bretton Woods 2.0 advertising, the new Bretton Woods has also made me believe that this is on the horizon. Please take a listen to this clip. The US dollar as the world's reserve currency in its current form remains the world's reserve currency, or do you think digital X, and you can fill it in if you choose to, or probably not, has taken over? Kristalina, to you first. Uh, yes, the US will be a reserve currency in 10 years. A digital or whether, the current form? Whether it is the <laughs> yeah. current one or it is a digital dollar is to be seen. Uh, that is, uh, let's get together in 10 years and see what we have in our wallet. Is it a digital dollar, digital wallet, or we still uh, rely on the dollar as we know it? Uh, and it is very likely it might be bought. Why? Because the strength of the U.S. economy the depth of the uh, capital markets in the United States, and above all, the innovation capability of uh, uh, U.S. companies. Uh, that is what is lifting a lot up the United States. And we will see, likely, some changes in the composition of reserve currencies. And I'm pretty sure there would be presence of digital in that uh, world 10 years uh, uh, from now. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that Julia Chatterley stated digital X, in my opinion, is no coincidence. This is the reason why. 
Julia Chatterley has had a great career for herself so far as a CNN anchor. And one of the stories she's been covering in the front lines for a long time is Ripple. Here we can see she's had a number of interviews with the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse. I believe at least three, maybe even four. The reason is because I think she knows the importance of XRP in the future of this financial system. She asked that pointed question. And Georgieva, while not answering that potential, you know, wink, wink, XRP related speculation directly, she did. She did talk about digital. The U.S. dollar, in my opinion, will be digital in one way, shape, or form in the not-too-distant future. Other countries are leading the way in CBDC adoption and stablecoin adoption. The digital one is an example of that. China is at the forefront right now, and other countries are following quickly. What's important, though, is she stated there will be changes in the composition of the world reserve currencies. The SDR basket of currency modification date has been changed. On March 5th, 2021, the IMF's executive board approved an extension to the current SDR, their SDR valuation basket by 10 months. It was supposed to be September 30th, 2021. Now it's July 31st, 2022. The IMF normally reviews the composition and valuation of the SDR basket every five years, and this extension effectively resets the five-yearly cycle of the SDR valuation reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, this next review will be done by mid-2022. And in my personal opinion, before then, we need to have regulatory clarity before we have this review in crypto. If it is, in fact, going to be a digital currency like XRP, that is put in this basket of currencies we still have to wait and see this is speculation but it's beginning to look more like it could be the case if it is in fact the case ladies and gentlemen we will shock the world forever there's a lot of more powerful information that i have to present in this video that makes me believe that xrp could in one way shape or form be used in this sdr basket and now it's time to point you in that direction. I'm taking you on a little bit of an adventure, and I hope you enjoy it. First, right here, we have to show that Sandy O'Connor has joined the Ripple Board of Directors. She's been recognized over the 30 years of her experience, specifically at JP Morgan, as having deep capital markets and balance sheet knowledge. She has risk management expertise. She retired as chief regulatory officer at JP Morgan. She set firm, comprehensive regulatory strategies and led engagement with G20 policymakers. Needless to say, she is a powerhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, this statement from American Banker says when JP Morgan and Sandy O'Connor talks, policymakers listen. Policymakers will listen to her, and she is at Ripple. That's very important. Sandy O'Connor has been at the forefront of a LIBOR transition. And before we can continue, what does that mean? LIBOR is the benchmark rate referenced by $350 trillion in bonds, loans, derivatives, and securitizations worldwide. And listen to this. After 2021, the end of this year, banks will no longer be able to enter into new USD LIBOR transactions, though some rates will still be published until mid-2023. And LIBOR will be replaced by SOFOR, Secured Overnight Financing Rate. This is a benchmark interest rate for dollar-denominated derivatives and loans that is replacing LIBOR. And here it's stated that this transition is expected to increase long-term liquidity, but also result in substantial short-term trading volatility in derivatives. Guys, why is all of this important? Why? I'm going to let Sandy O'Connor, instrumental in this LIBOR transition to SOFOR, speak on that. 
Um, it is calculated each day, um, and it's not just for U.S. dollar LIBOR. It's calculated across five different currencies and seven maturities for those currencies, and and. Basically, a bunch of panel banks are uh, questioned as to what level they think they could borrow at. And in the U.S. dollar market, um, there are currently 16 panel banks. Um, and each day, the benchmark administrator, um, the IBA, uh, submits that question to them. Those panel banks um, answer the question of where they think they can they can borrow. And then the benchmark administrator calculates the levels, uh, uses a, a, a trimming methodology, and then around 11:45 publishes the rate uh, that they have uh, calculated. And then that rate is used to uh, uh, to be referenced to for a whole variety of contracts spanning derivatives contracts to loans, mortgages, securitizations, etc. And that's how it's done. Now, I'm going to stop the clip right there and then play it again after I say this. Sandy O'Connor is systemically important to the financial system and she joined Ripple's board of directors. In my opinion, because Ripple is systemically important to the future of the financial system. People that say Ripple and XRP are a scam or a joke are so incompetent, they should be dismissed and everything they say should never be heard from again. They lack logic and reason. They lack objective thought. I just have to say that. She just described one of the most important things in financial markets. Now, please listen to the rest of this. Yeah, and even credit cards, I was a little bit surprised to see that included in the list. So it, it, it's interesting, I think, for most Americans, they don't understand how important this benchmark is. No, absolutely. LIBOR is um, pervasive in many aspects of, of financial markets. Um, clearly, uh, you know, the, the, the largest market that references LIBOR is the derivatives market. Um, so of the $200 trillion that resets based on LIBOR, I would say 95% of it is in the derivatives market. But again, that said, there are a whole bunch of products that, you know, each of us use in our daily lives, whether it's, you know, credit cards or mortgages or securitizations or floating rates notes where we might have an investment in that is currently tied to this to this benchmark. Well, I guess that certainly begs the question, what, what's the major problem with LIBOR? Why is there this movement to shift away from it? Yeah, great, great question. Um, you know, you would have seen in the press, and many people think about the the issue with LIBOR is you know, related to the manipulation concerns that had that have been out there. Um, but that actually is not the issue that you know the Alternative Reference Rate Committee or the benchmark uh, working groups around the globe are looking to solve. Um, that said, I, I, I should mention that you know there were concerns around LIBOR manipulation, but you know there have been improvements to processes and governance and over oversight by the panel banks themselves, the benchmark administrator, and the Financial Conduct Authority that have really shored up the actual production of LIBOR. So back to the question, right. what's the problem? <laughs> well, the problem is that, you know, the, the market that LIBOR has been seeking to measure, so the, the, the funding, uh, the trading of funding between banks, has really declined. I, I guess the, the question then, um, you, you mentioned um, uh, the Alternative Reference Rate Committee. I know you're part of that. What, what's your role and, and, what is, and, and when did that form and, and what's, what's happening there? Because there's such a key component to this transition away from LIBOR. Sure, uh, absolutely. So the Alternative Reference Rate Committee, and I'm the, I'm the chair. Um, so you you're know, kind of actually, <laughs> I was the chair of 1.0 and ARC 2.0, which I'm sure we'll get to. Um, right. But the Alternative Reference Rate Committee was convened by, you know, the Federal Reserve Board, the Federal Reserve of New York, the Treasury, the CFTC, um, the OFR, really to address the financial stability risk that could occur if LIBOR no longer existed. So in 2014, this group was brought together um, with, with three very distinct objectives. One, identify one or more alternative risk-free or nearly risk-free rates that could be used as a replacement for LIBOR for derivatives contracts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to finish the rest of this clip. If you guys aren't doing so already, please go to this video. JP Morgan, Sandy O'Connor on the CFTC Talks and take a look.
It was a very enlightening video, and I highly recommend you educating yourself further. The reason I stopped it there is because she mentioned derivative contracts and LIBOR. Why is that important? The reason, guys, is because there is plenty of speculation in this community, and it is only speculation up to this point, that XRP could very well be used in the derivatives market. There is some grounding for why we believe in this speculation as a possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, the DTCC is how I believe and how many other community members believe is Ripple's way of getting XRP into the derivatives market. The DTCC is a member of Hyperledger and states it was contributed to by NTT Data and Ripple. They had a document titled Modernizing U.S. Equ Equity Markets Infrastructure. The problem, real-time settlement means they need massive capital and securities to make trading deliveries. The DTCC stated from the same document, real-time settlements could introduce inefficiencies when Nostro Vostro builds up. Remember, Greg Kidd stated XRP will replace Nostro Vostro accounts one day. In a normal low volatility trading day, the DTCC processes over 1 million shares a second. And during peak trading hours, this can be up to 300 million shares per second or $25 billion a second. This has extreme systemic risks. They state later in the document that any tech implemented needed to meet industry standards of handling two to three times the market volume peak. This means it's 25,000 transactions a second. XRP can scale up to 65,000 transactions per second, and it meets that qualification. They stated in that document that any tech implemented needed to be 2 to 3x market peak volume. XRP qualifies, and this is all stated in a King Solomon video. Please give him a follow by far our best deep dive researcher and why I believe eventually down the road, this is long term, XRP could make its way into settling derivatives. That is a over quadrillion dollar market. They start with cross border, then they take over the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this. Sandy O'Connor's connection, LIBOR transition, derivatives, XRP DTCC derivative settling speculation, which is not unfounded, Julia Chatterley's interview, the IMF talking about a digital dollar, IMF revaluation of the SDR coming in 2022, and now an important variable in all of this. That is Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler has just joined Twitter just a few days ago, by the way, right before Elizabeth Warren gave the SEC a deadline to come up with crypto clarity. That is no coincidence. We're in the midst of this SEC ripple battle and Gary Gensler is now on Twitter. I think there's a powerful reason for that. We're going to get into it right after I state this. Gary Gensler, while he was at the CFTC as the chairman he was a big LIBOR transition advocate. My, my, my. How deep these connections go. Ladies and gentlemen, not only did Gary Gensler want this LIBOR transition, even since 2013, it was a statement he made, one of the first statements he made as the SEC chair, referencing LIBOR yet again. So we have someone at Ripple who's the chair and bringing on this LIBOR transition and someone in the SEC who wants this LIBOR transition. Trust me when I tell you they've probably been working very well together behind the scenes. That's how politics work. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandy O'Connor, Gary Gensler both want the same thing. We've seen the abomination that's been this SEC lawsuit. We saw Elizabeth Warren wanting clarity for the crypto space from the SEC. We saw the SEC state nothing. But we have Jeremy Hogan, our community attorney, stating Ripple said nothing too. They didn't file a document. 
and he believes a settlement may be coming sooner than we all expect. Please take a listen. Ripple never replied to the SEC's brief. Again, you have some of the best security lawyers in the country working for Ripple, and this is a reply that is time sensitive, and it still hasn't been filed. Ripple has not replied and has left unaddressed the issues raised in the SEC's reply of July 21st. Now, wow, did Ripple blow it? Do Ripple's 23 lawyers need more than nine days to draft a three-page reply brief? Or, wait for it. Or is it possible, or yes, even likely, that Ripple didn't bother to file a response to the SEC because it didn't need to? And why didn't Ripple need to? Well, here we go. Ripple didn't need to file a reply because there were serious discussions going on regarding se Shh. <whistles> really? It's the big crescendo reveal of my video? Of maybe all my XRP videos and I get shushed by the old Spice guy? I was just saying that everything leading up to this last week points to this case being very close to se Shh. <whistles> okay, fine. Are there other possible explanations? Yes, of course. I mean, one of the main counsel could be very sick, knock on wood. The case could be stayed. There's a hundred things. There's just, that's just one thing that comes to mind and there could be hundreds of others. But my best guess and what I think is the most likely case is that there is going to be a set. Nope. Baby Yoda, so cool. And how will you know if I'm just wrong, which is doubtful, or perhaps one of the other possible scenarios has passed. Look for something to be filed in the case by this Friday. If nothing is filed this Friday, my guess is that, well, let me just say there's something happening here, but what it is ain't exactly clear. Now, the key to making money in a situation like this is to position yourself now before the settlement, because by the time you read about it in the Wall Street Journal, it's already too late. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe Gary Gensler's ties to this LIBOR transition, as well as Sandy O'Connor's ties to this LIBOR transition, as well as the complete display of incompetence the SEC had in this lawsuit against Ripple, is making it likely that this settlement is coming sooner than we expect. Jeremy Hogan speculates that is possible. We still have to wait and see. But I think it could happen. And the only thing I warn you is... Be in before the settlement. This is the Bearable Boy here, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video.